Namaste and welcome to React Bits. Today I'm here to talk about the latest update in Flutter. So Flutter team has just announced Flutter 1.20 stable version and with this version they bring lots of improvements, few new features. So this might be the biggest Flutter update till now. They have closed more than 5,000 issues and merged more than 3,000 pull requests from more than 200 developers, contributors. They have made few design updates, performance upgrades, and so on. One of the first thing in performance that they have done is the icon font tree setting. With this, whenever you add icon fonts and you only use one or two of the icons from the font, now the app when build in release mode will only keep those icons not all the icons from the icon font so that the size will be reduced drastically if you are using multiple icon fonts in your application like font awesome metro app and others so that is one great improvement next is performance improvement with animations so animation jank improvement that is if your animation is slow in the beginning from the second run it should be very fast because it is using warm-up phase so it uses some kind of warm-up phase that warms up the skia setting language shader language shader provides pre-compilation so that it it is faster after the first launch next is they have updated few of the widgets as you can see in my screen i have a simple demo app so first two widgets they have updated is the design of range slider and the slider widget it is different from the previous design and it is up to date with the new material design spec and next is they have updated the dead picker so it has new compact design here you can use either the picker field or calendar to choose the date. Okay, so this is the date picker they have updated. And those of you like me who are using external package to pick a range, date range, now Flutter has a default range picker. So if you see here, we can show the date range picker using show date range picker function. And here we need to pass first date and last date same as the date picker after that we need to pass the initial date range so instead of initial date we pass initial date range and it is a type of date time range and date time range is just an object that has two date times start and end so start and end you need to set the initial date range after that if you show the range speaker this is how it looks it is a full screen dialog you can customize these icons and these texts and same with date picker you can either use text fields or calendar to pick a date so to pick a range you select the start date and you select the in date this will pick the range between that and it returns a date range date time range object this date time range object consists of this start date and in date once i press save you can check in the debug console i have printed out the pick date so it's august 2 to september 10 that is the range picked so we have a date time picker range range picker next the time picker has been updated i like the new look so uh, it's quite bold and quite good previously it was difficult to pick select between these two and pick the time but this looks awesome so this new design is awesome you can also use directly use the keyboard to enter date and time or you can go to clock and pick so this is the new time picker and next thing that is updated is the license space so license space is responsive let me show you the official space where they have shown the 
responsive license space. I am in the mobile device, it's not quite visible, but while running in desktop or web, you can clearly see that we have a quite good license space, responsive license space that is accessed from about dialog. And this is the time picker we just seen. This is the date range picker, and this is the updated slider, range slider and slider with the new material spec. Apart from this, the Flutter team has updated few things like PubSpec AML format, new PubSpec format is required for publishing or updating your existing plugins. And most importantly, Dart DevTools in Visual Studio Code has improved a lot. So you can now open the DevTools inside Visual Studio Code, embedded inside Visual Studio Code instead of opening it in the browser. So let's see that in action. So to make that happen, first you need to go to settings. To go to settings, press control comma, that will give you the settings and here search Dart Preview. In Dart, when you search for Dart Preview, you should see this Dart Preview Embedded Dev Tools. Just check this. This is experimental. So you need to check it to enable. By default, it is not enabled. So I have enabled it. Once you check it, it is enabled and now when you open the dev tools it will open the inspector wizard inspector page here directly inside visual studio code so let me close this see we can see the details tree layout explorer we can see those here and to other open to open other dev tool pages just use the Visual Studio Code command. So here, if you type dev tools, you can see. So you can open network page, logging page, widget inspector, memory page, performance page. So open web view developer. Sorry, this is not developer tools. Open timeline page. So we can open. And if we do open dev tools, I think this should open other options. So open inspector page, timeline page, memory page, performance page, or we can choose to open the dev tools in web browser if we don't want that. So if I open the performance page, it should load the performance view here. So you are running app in debug mode, debug mode performance is not indicative of release performance. So this is that performance view. So this is how we can view that dev tools which is embedded inside VS Code, which is still in experimental phase, but I can say it's already proving a lot useful. Next, next best thing that has happened to Visual Studio Dart tools is that automatically updating the renaming file changes and moving the file. So whenever you move a file from one folder to another, or if you rename a file, the import statements are automatically updated. So here I'm importing home.dart. If now I rename this home.dart, homepage.dart, see, this is automatically renamed. And if I move to a new folder, let's say I make a folder here, pages, and if I move this inside pages, again, this is automatically updated. And this is a huge bonus. This has been quite a problem for a long time now. I am really thankful to the developers. So we now can easily refactor our applications. And finally, the next best thing we have for tool developers. So anyone who would like to develop tools for Flutter, now we have a tools metadata repository where we have all the metadata regarding Flutter. So if we see here, we have resources folder where we have catalog. So we have widgets catalog that catalogs all the widgets that Flutter provides and that provides a colors catalog, which provides the constant color values for color names. So we can see all the color values as well. So if you are developing a Visual Studio extension or any other tools related to Flutter, this will come in a lot handy. So this is what Flutter 1.20 brings to us. Finally, I'd like to show the 
interactive widget so in the flutter announcement i'll post the link of this announcement post in the description do check it out so if we go here we have a new interactive viewer widget so if we check the api documentation of interactive viewer widget we have a dot pad code running here let me copy this and open dot pad let me paste this and run we can see that this is interactive you can pan and zoom this interactive viewer widget it is lot easier to build a pan and zoom enabled interactive widget so let me just add few things so that it is very clear let me make this max scale up to 4.0 let me zoom in a little bit max scale 4.0 and in container let me add a child and here let me add just for the demo 1.2 so let me run this so here i have this now we can zoom in like this we can pan see we can easily zoom and pan the interactive viewer widget so this is another awesome new widget that has been that have been added to flutter 1.2 so this is what the amazing new update brings to us thank you everyone for watching this tutorial hope you found something that will help your existing app or new apps taken to the new level thank you everyone